Uh, our next panelist is Richard Delaney, the National President of the Retired Enlisted Association. Mr. Delaney, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Chairman Saunders and Miller and ranking members Burr and Michaud uh, and members of the committees, good morning. It is an honor to speak to you today about the concerns and goals of TRIA's members and indeed of all enlisted members and their families and survivors. I ask that my full written testimony be made part of the record. I am Richard Delaney, the president of the Retired Enlisted Association. It is my honor to hold this office this year as TRIA celebrates its 50th anniversary. We were founded to give a voice to the concerns of the men and women who have served in America's enlisted ranks, and there is no more urgent time than now to hear these concerns. These are difficult times. The VA is facing both new and growing challenges that must be successfully handled if our country is to keep its commitments to the men and women who have served us so well. The vast majority of our military personnel in Afghanistan will return by the end of 2014, and clearly the administration is planning further downsizing of the military. This means that the VA's job and obligations are going to get larger. It is crucial that wise long-term plans are created and implemented to deal with these approaching duties. Unfortunately, our testimony today is given prior to the release of the administration's proposed budget. Therefore, we respectfully request that we be allowed to submit to your committees additional written thoughts and suggestions after we see the proposals in the FY 2014 budget. Still, there are several areas that we hope to be worked on this year. First, the VA must continue to approve the speed and accuracy of its adjudication process. We know that for years, the VA has been working to improve both aspects of the system, and we are grateful for their dedication. However, the problems have not been solved. In fact, they continue to grow worse. On their own website, the VA shows that there are presently over 2 million claims awaiting adjudication. A second issue of great concern is the abrupt end three weeks ago of the effort to create a single lifetime electronic health care record that would follow a service member from enlistment throughout his or her life. We know that the House VA Committee held a hearing yesterday on this issue, and you are clearly as concerned as we are, and the changes, so please don't let up your efforts. A single electronic health care record system would make medical treatments easier and more successful. It would make adjudication of claims easier. It would help us recognize and trace wartime injuries and new illnesses quickly, and it could save countless hours of work keeping, finding, and distributing data. Third, while the VA must adapt to a surge of young veterans coming to it in greater numbers than in the past, the dramatic change in the demographics of military personnel will result in an increase of women veterans seeking VA services. Women veterans clearly have many different needs than their male counterparts. These are not only health care needs, but they also need child care, since a majority of new women veterans are also mothers. They are less likely to self-report their veteran status. So clearly, new methods of outreach are needed when trying to reach women. It is crucial that the VA continue to focus on understanding their fastest growing demographic and serving their needs. Fourth, the nation is rightfully worried by the dramatic increase in the number of veteran suicides. A new VA report showed that the number of veterans committing suicide had grown to 22 a day in 2010. This obviously is unacceptable. But while the VA is working to help new veterans re-entering the civilian world with any mental health issues they may be experiencing, we must not forget about older veterans. The VA's two-year study found that over 69% of all veterans committing suicide are over the age of 50. Indeed, it is starting at age 50 that the suicide rate of veterans first surpasses that of the U.S. population in general. These veterans' problems are not the same as those recently returning from war zones. The VA must study and help both groups with their different problems. Fifth, a special thank you for the work that you, your staffs, the staffs of the VA and the DOD do, and, and all the VSOs, and how they are focused on how we can help veterans find jobs and careers and start businesses so they can reap the joys and benefits of the nation that they have sacrificed so much to protect. These efforts must continue. Sixth, among veterans' bills that have been introduced so far this year, we urge passing, passage of House Resolution 679, Honor America's Guard and Reserve Retirees Act. This bipartisan bill would grant recognition as veterans of the armed forces of the United States to members of the Guard and Reserve who have served a career of 20 years or more but were never, through no fault of their own, called to active duty long enough to be recognized as veterans. This is a no-cost bill. The individuals covered by this bill are already military retirees. 
They receive military retiree benefits and a number of veterans benefits, yet they receive the veterans benefit. Our government does not recognize them as veterans. The House of Representatives have passed this legislation in each of the past two years, and we urge passage again this year by the House and also urge the Senate to also adopt it. Expanding on a quote by Abraham Lincoln, we cannot escape the responsibility of tomorrow by evading it today. Those are wise words as you consider the responsibility of our nation that we have to take care of our veterans in these challenging times. Again, thank you for your attention. I look forward to trying to answer any questions you may have. Mr. Delaney, thank you very much for your testimony.